What's up, everybody? Well, I got another Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage video for you guys today. And today, I'm gonna take care of the very last thing that's kind of irritated me about this laptop. Well, besides lack of a MUX switch. Can't do nothing about that, though. I'm going to install a different Wi-Fi adapter inside, because I would like a little bit better speeds. It's not like it ever disconnects on me in games, or I have bad latency or bad lag spikes or anything like that. You guys have seen me play plenty of online games. I just want a little bit better one, that's all. The main annoyance with it is I hate how long it takes when you start it up. It takes it like sometimes 20, 30 seconds just to get some internet. Everything else is ready to go. So I'm hoping the next one won't do that. That might just be the way the laptop is. I don't know. Any case, let's get this thing shut down and start taking it apart. Okay, we got the thing all shut off and all flipped over and about ready to start taking it apart, but figured I'd just run over some things you guys might need. If you're gonna do this, I've got a kit like this. Got it off of Amazon, but if you have one of these, the most important part's right Right here the screwdriver but I'm also going to use this to take the little attachments off of the adapter and then I'm also going to use this to help take it apart so now we can get that out of the way so got our screwdriver ready with a p20 Phillips screwdriver so we got that next a pry bar can help get the thing started once you get all the screws undone. And then I'm going to use these tweezers to take off the small little uh, antenna wires and Bluetooth wires that go throughout the little laptop. There's two little wires hooked up to it, as you'll see as soon as we're done hooking up. Also, it'd be a good idea to have a little bowl or something to put all the screws in. This one's a magnetic one. Doesn't have to be, but these are very useful. So if you don't have one of these, I would recommend grabbing one. They're like nine bucks on Amazon. And then that way you won't lose any screws. And then last but not least, I I'm keeping these nearby because with the M.2 secondary SSD slot, the blasted screw was so tight, I literally could not take it off no matter which screwdriver head I tried. I tried like 10 different ones and no matter what, they would have stripped. So I used this so they didn't get stripped. So might have to use it again. So you might want to keep some pliers by hand just in case that happens to you. I guess we'll see once we get in there. So now let's get started with all the screws here. There are different link screws. All of these front ones are tinier like this, but then once you get to the middle and around some of the other ones, they start getting long, so just don't try to put them in the wrong spots and you'll be fine. And I'm leaving this last right screw in to the very end for a reason, which I will explain when we get to it, but as you can see, the middle ones are a little bit longer, so don't get them mixed up, because it will not work if you try to put the long ones in the front. Try to get to some angles so I'm not covering up too much stuff here. Whoop, thought we had him all out a little bit more. There we go. Another long screw. Now we gotta do the back, guys. Super easy, though. Though I've also taken this, taken this thing apart uh, this is going to be my third time now. Wants to upgrade the RAM and wants to put another SSD in there. Oh, come here, you. And then we got our last guy over here. Well, not last guy. There's still that one in the right corner. And then it's another long one. So, when we get to this one, just keep going till you hear a little click. There we go. If you heard that click, that means it is completely released. That one does not come out any farther than that. So don't bother trying. You'll never take it completely out. I don't know why it's that way, but they just left it that way. So now let's move on to getting it opened up. Okay, so I got this part started off camera because it can be kind of a pain in the ass. But once you get started, get started, it's not so bad. So just take your little tool or whatever you're using to do this. I'd I'd recommend keeping it plastic and then just keep oop, moving along and lightly pulling up. 
around the whole circumference of the lava top. And then once you get it to a certain point, you can start. Sounds terrible, I know, but here we go. I think there's still a couple. Yep, there we go. And then you have to be very careful with this next part. Now for this next part, be very careful. As you can see, there's two, two wires here and you don't want to mess those up. So we're just gonna lightly put that out of the way. And then what we want is underneath this guy. So now we have to take our stock SSD out real quick. So let's just undo that real quick. And that thing's really small. So we'll put that off to the side. Gently just pull this off to the side and just set it out of the way for now, someplace safe. And then we'll try to get the camera a little closer and go on. So there we go, now we're more zoomed in. And I wanted to point out real quick, these two things here. One is marked main, this black one is main. So the black cord's main, the white cord is auxiliary. Just make sure you don't get these two mixed up. So now what I'm going to do is very careful, use these tweezers. Okay, did that part off camera, but what I ended up doing was I just put the tweezers right under this metal part and then put my finger underneath the cord and just kind of lifted it up and that got them off of there. So yeah, we don't want to lose these guys. You come back here. All right. Well, whatever. They're out of the way and that's what counts. Now, let's work on getting this out. All right. So, nope, we didn't need any pliers this time. That's the exact same screw as the M.2, I believe. Yep, it's exactly the same. So you don't have to worry about mixing those two up. So now, just like before, we just have to lift up, slide it to the left. I'm out of there, you. This is definitely the most pain in the ass. Here we go. And I have stubby fingers and it's not easy for me to get. So there we go. We got it out. Now, let's put our new one in. Okay, here's our new one. It's an Intel AX200GW. So, now let's just try to finagle this little tiny guy into the slots. Here we go. Now that's slotted in. We can take our screw back. This kit also gives you a screw, but I don't know if everyone will. And then we just screw him back down like so. Not too tight, but just as tight as it was. Now we need to work on getting those two connectors plugged back on. So now for putting these guys on, my basic plan is to just hold it over whoop, and try to snap it in place. Whoop. You just gotta line it up and don't force it because I'm sure this stuff is delicate. So just take your time. Most of you guys will probably be able to do this a lot easier than me and my s dumb old hands here. So, all right, I'm gonna do this part off camera because at this rate, it's probably gonna take me 10 minutes just to get these stupid things hooked back on, but then we'll turn the camera back on after. Okay, got those connectors back on. I sold myself short. It only took me like three minutes to get them on. Black one was a lot more tough since there's not as much slack on it. Just line it up and be very careful. What I did is I just lined it up, held it there kind of with my hand and pressed down with my uh, tweezers and then that got it back on there. But now it's time for us to put our stock SSD back in there. And for anybody interested, it is an Intel 760 P series and it's 512 gigs on this particular model, but your model may vary depending on what one you've got. Now just plug it in, slide it into the right, and then you can just ugh, grab the little SSD screw and then you can just hold it down with one finger And then just snug, doesn't have to be super, super ultra tight. Snug, and there we go. Now your SSD is stop, or is back in there, and now we can work on getting this thing casing back together. So let me get this camera raised back up, and we can start doing just that. There we go, now just 
replace your shell or your back casing, whatever you want to call it, back on. And then all you have to do to reattach it is just lightly, well, firmly, but not so much that you're going to break the screen, run around and do this. And there we go. Now let's just take a quick look. Make sure that you're flush around your whole laptop. And we are flush everywhere there. And this is the last side. Nope, we are flush everywhere. So now we can work on putting the screws back in. So here we go. Just gonna put our screws back in now. Super easy. There we go. And magnetic screwdrivers make this whole ordeal so much easier. They're not required, but definitely makes things easier. There we go, that guy's all tight. Now we can tighten the one that doesn't actually come out. There we go, he's all tight. Now we'll go to the next one. Here we go. There we go. And with all of them, just make them snug. You don't have to power the thing in there so tight that it either strips it or breaks it or makes it impossible to get it back out if you ever should have to open it again. Because, just a tip, if you do ever have to send this back in, if you've got aftermarket RAM like I do, SSD, and now uh, Wi-Fi chip, you take all that back out if you ship it back for servicing. None of this voids your warranty, but if they give you a different laptop back, well then, you're just kind of SOL, because they're probably not going to give you any of your stuff. So there we go. We'll just put our last, last screws in. I guess I could have probably been to telling you that whole story while I did the screwing in part, but I got distracted. Besides, most people probably skip this part anyway, because most people probably know how to do, how to install the screws back in, but I'm just being thorough here. Because in past videos way back long ago before this laptop, I had people, you know, say, oh, this isn't a real video because you didn't, you didn't show me how to put the screws back in. But anyway, there we go. All of the screws are back in, so now why don't we get it back on its laptop stand, back hooked up back to the monitor, and go see if we have to install any drivers or whatnot, which we probably do. I hope there's at least some stock ones so I don't have to go take it into the other room and hook it into ethernet to get them, but we will see. Well, all right, let's turn it on and see if I made it damaged and make it so it won't turn on, but it looks like it's powering on so far. All right, good sign, good sign. Still boots up damn quick. Here we go. Would have been able to do that instantly if I used the actual laptop keyboard, but then I'd be getting in the way of the keyboard, so. Now I'm not expecting it to connect to any Wi-Fi because I'm assuming it probably needs drivers or something. But let's just see. Maybe it just wants me to go down here and connect. Oop, that's not what I wanted. How do I? Here we go. All right. Let me just go type that in right quick. So yeah, at least on Windows 11, I'm assuming 10 is basically the same. Yeah, I didn't have to install any drivers for it or anything. So you should be good to go. Just sign back into whatever network you were in, whether you were in 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. It does both. And I'm pretty sure if we go down here, it says, yep, Bluetooth still available. It's just I don't have any Bluetooth connected. So now let's just run this and see if we got any meaningful upgrade. Because before we got about 300. Well, that's a lot better.
Yeah, that's much better. That's almost as good as my desktop. My desktop, I think, at like 520 when I did this test. Yeah, we're not hitting my maximum upload. My max upload's about 35. But it looks like it would climb up there and hit it eventually if it would be a big enough file. This test just didn't work long enough. And also, sorry, I didn't just do screen recording. I didn't think it was worth it for just one, one little speed test. So... There we go. We've improved the Wi-Fi speed dramatically, so I am very happy. So why don't we just wrap this video on up now? Well, I'm very happy. I did not break anything yet again for the third time, and I hopefully won't have to open this thing up any farther for any reason. So I'm going to take me a nice little victory hit. Hell yeah, well deserving. Pop that back over there, and I hope this video helped you guys install your guys' Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth cards. Not as intimidating as it might uh, appear to be at first, but I even had a little trouble here and there, but instead of getting mad, just stay calm and just keep at it. These are all delicate components. You, anger is the worst possible thing you can. I had to sit there and just finagle, especially those little two Wi-Fi cords to hook back on. Getting them off wasn't so bad, but hooking them back on took me like a solid three minutes of effort, especially that black one. Why don't we just wrap this up? I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until the next video, Peace out, guys.